the next thing we want to do is kind of split this up into tiles of 10 pixels each. So how do we go about doing that? Well, again, what we did in the last project is we've added a loop in two different directions, in the X direction and the Y direction. So we're going to do something pretty similar here. So the first thing we're going to do is in draw because we want draw to be animated. So we need to do it in draw, not set up. So what we want to do in here is first of all, declare a tile size. So first thing I'm going to do before, well, just between a background and image, is going to be a constant called tile size. This is going to be equal to 10. So I've just made up the word tile size. This isn't something that's part of P5. It's just something that I've said. Tile size is always going to be 10. So I don't need to keep writing 10 everywhere. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make a loop across the page in the same way as we did in the previous project. So first thing is going to be a for loop. So four round brackets, curly brackets. So again, four takes three parts to it, a start, an end and a step. So what we're going to do is just make sure this doesn't run out of control by doing let x equal zero. Again, x is a thing that I just made up going across the page in the x direction. So let, and then the second thing we want to do, so we're going to add the semicolon, let x less than zero. So this just means don't start, don't do anything at the moment. So zero, end at zero. So what we're going to do next is add a step. So again, we're going to do a semicolon. So we want every single step. We want X to be the previous X plus one. So the first loop is going to be zero, then one, then two, then three, if there was certain numbers to go to. Now I'm going to open up my curly brackets next. So I'm going to add some more code inside here. So we've done things in the X direction across the page. We want to do things in the Y direction in the same way. So it's similar to what we've got, we're going to do another for loop for round brackets, curly brackets, and this should look fairly similar. So let y equal zero, and then a semicolon, y is less than zero, and then a semicolon, y is equal to y plus one. And now what we're gonna do is open up these curly brackets. So we've got two boxes inside here. Now, how many do we have across and how many do we have down? So I've got my tile size as 10 and I've got my whole page as 1200 and 600. So I could work out the math on this and say, you know, 10 divided, uh, this divided by 10, this divided by 10 is exactly what I need. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in 120 here and also 60 here. Now at the moment, this code doesn't do anything because there's nothing inside here. But what we want to do is basically add a kind of source X and a source Y and a source width and a source height and also a destination X, destination Y and so on. So this is what I'm going to do next. This should look fairly familiar from the last project. So within here, what we're going to do is an SX, which is going to be across the page times the tile size and the constant SY is gonna be the Y direction times a tile size. And then the width and height is gonna be the same. It's gonna be a, exactly a tile size. Now again, of course, the tile size could change and it could be different things, which is why we wanna save it to a constant, but then we want to send it to a destination. So here, what we're gonna say is exactly the same thing for now. Obviously, we're gonna change this a little bit later when we add some movement to this. And then a constant dy is going to be tile size. And then here we've got the tile size in this direction. So basically we're making this original good morning into basically um, quite a lot of these. So this times this amount of images, quite a lot of number. It's like 120 times 60, which is pretty big. So what we're going to just quickly do is reduce this down to make sure this all works. So I'm just going to take this off to six and 12 and then times this by a hundred just to make sure this works. Now, again, we have this uh, image down here based on a kind of default. I'm actually going to get rid of this for now. We don't need it anymore. And instead I'm just going to put our image inside here. So which image, the graphic, and now we need the DX and DY and the W and the DH. We need the destination and the original source. So what do we need to do in here? We're going to write image with which image, the graphic, comma, D X comma D Y comma D W D H. So this is the destination X and Y coordinates, the width and height of the destination, basically where the grid is set, which are these lot. And then what we need to do is the source. So similar source X, source Y, source W, 
source height. So what we should see now is a grid that looks the same. Now again, if I start messing with this grid a little bit more and adding some distortion with this, then it starts to look a bit weirder. Again, if I just add something like a frame count to the SX, we should see it just moving to the left because the source is kind of panning to the right and the destination is moving over to the other way. So there's a few things that we can start to do in here. We can see it working in a similar way. So the next thing we want to do, similar to the last project, is add some distortion in. So we'll talk about that in the next video.